September 19th, 2023, 7.30 a.m. The agenda of the EGA, EDA is in session. We're going to call to order. We want to look at the uh, approval of the agenda. Has everybody had a chance to check this one? Well, I have now. <laughs> I, have, I have approved the agenda. Make we, a motion to we have a motion to approve. Second. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Consent agenda. Approval of minutes of the 15th EDA meetings and approval of minutes of the 29th special EDA meetings. Um, this is where we add comment to this. Um, so you'll uh, consent agenda will be one motion with the second. If you'd like to pull anything, we can most certainly pull it, but these are considered routine in nature and no additional discussion. I just want to make note of the uh, gentleman who had an issue with not being able to speak. Is this where we would say that? Um, we can add an open forum. We don't have it on there. No, we, we're, we're, yeah, we're not adding an open forum. We yeah. just this people speak. This is where you could add an open forum if you wanted to, or allow people to speak. But okay. So I just want to make sure that uh, it been brought to my attention that he's running around telling people that he can't talk, and uh, I officially now have made him not a liar. The last of admission, we did not. But he has said also that he has never in his life had a anybody been able not to talk and yet he is the one that started this back when he was a mayor of this here city who started this with Shirley Slater and in a motion to not pass he made everybody vote not to talk that day so I just want that on public record that this is something that has happened and he's the one that started it so there we are moving on do we have, do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda do we have to do a motion now? Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. I'll make a motion. We have a motion? Second. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Number four, EDA member updates requests. That's a Zach thing? Uh, yeah, I'm just here. EDA chair and members of the EDA. Uh, this is on the last meeting and allowed for an updates and requests. I know this is where you guys made a recommendation to do over business ordinances. That was passed along to our new community development director, John Seabald. Um, I asked him to be here this morning. I don't know if he'll probably show up as soon as he gets here. Um, just to introduce himself to you guys, um, as he will be the representative that will likely help you guys work through the ordinance portion of the process. I'm not sure if we'll transition myself off of the EDA and move him on to it, just because it's more focused on his community development area of the city versus my area. But again, we'll check and see how that thing goes. I'm not too concerned about it overall. but. This is the spot where we have updates. If you have any of those things that you've done, any business discussions, any um, discussions overall with um, residents and so forth, and any other requests that you have for items to look at. Um, one of the items that I know we wanted to have on our um, agenda or on our strategic plan was to get a list of commercial businesses that were available for sale or for lease. We had a good conversation with Hennepin County yesterday about helping uh, help with that. And it sounds like they were willing to help us. So we're going to pair with the city of Rogers and us, try to help and do that simultaneously together to try to help both cities out um, as we're learning this process overall. So it sounds like it's going to be a good thing for both of us, but that is something that is in the works as well. Just wanted to give you an update on those things. Any feedback on the flower pots in Old uh, Town? Historic Village. Or historic Village. Um, at first we had the ones, yes, there were some comments, yes, um, they were not nice comments at first. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was this one? Uh, the flower pots in uh, the Stork Village area. Did, you Is there resident them? comments? Yes, resident okay. comments um, in general about how they were planted poorly, but again, it was planted by volunteers, so okay. we take what we can get. Um, we have some other volunteers that are willing to do it next year and possibly this fall, so we're going to best we can again they they flowered nicely so once they were full bloom they looked wonderful and they looked very nice yeah. so when they but they were on the first planet they were very small and, okay um, and the public works has done a very good job of watering them and they have turned out very nice um i did have one comment that they stuck out a lot because of the color versus the colors that are down there um and that was about the only comment i had uh, okay. after they've been there for a while i think we've had i haven't had any comments in a couple months at least since they've been up and around but I think people took them as sh shock right away just because they're um, they something different. Terracotta, they were something new, they were something different that was not used to being down there. So, but overall, 
we had a resounding number of people who wanted to do them and vol and uh, when I say do them I mean um, donate towards them or sponsor them so we had a number of people that wanted to do that and I know we had more that were probably in the back burner that didn't hear about it um, just because it was so quick to turn around but so I'm not sure we want to do it again but you so said maybe this fall are you thinking of like maybe changing the annuals out to something right. for like a Christmas kind of right. like yeah we had a volunteer who reached out to um, uh, Mar Marty Farrell our public works director and said that they'd be willing to plant some sort of holiday slash seasonal thing in there um, if we're willing to help out with some of the plants they buy some of the plants as well or help us plant those things will these take to plowing no <laughs> no they'd be done before well no. They're far enough off the road, so they wouldn't affect probably initial buildup. But if there was a lot of snow, we'd probably have to remove them sooner than later. The only thing is that, again, they are in the way if we have to plow off those sidewalks, that they are now inhibiting us to do that. Um, not saying they're not allowed, but again, it's just trying to figure out what's going to work. We don't want them to break either. And um, so we got to try to keep in mind of that. But if we can have them, we'd like to use them further along in the year and, and replant them for some. I thought they looked good. Uh, seasonal stuff. I thought they looked good. Yeah, I mean, it's so always so difficult. Or something. You know, it's difficult to know when they're going to need to, like, from a snow perspective, when they need to come off. But, you know, some years were pretty warm all the way up into early December. And, yep. you know, a, new, a holiday kind of flower thing would be nice, I think. But you get more use out of them for the whole year. Yeah, correct. I don't know if they'd be there the whole year. Again, maybe we can make them work the whole year. I don't know exactly. They are not terracotta. They're just a terracotta look. So right. not like it's going. It's not like a ceramic where it's going to break as soon as right. it gets cold at all. Um, it is a fiberglass type material, so it's pretty resilient too. My guess on the last, based on the last couple winters, you're probably going to have to take them up because there's a lot of snow that gets plowed off that street <laughs> onto the walks. Yeah, very, very possible. Like I said, it's not something that's yeah, like, yeah we're going to have to do. Something that we're looking into. If we can do it, great. If not, then pull them and be done. So, any other updates or requests from you guys would be appreciated here. Otherwise, we'll move forward. Um, the only other thing I had was on the, I guess, the one work project or the uh, ordinances and that. I think we did say we we're going to just focus on the business. business. Yep, correct. Okay. We are working on through those. Again, we have multiple ordinances that need to be updated. Whether they're business related or not is the is the determination here. Um, John has been inundated with items to work on that we've heard about through planning commission, through city council, through the EDA. And so, if you guys have any specific ones as you guys are reviewing them that you really want to make sure we hit right away, those would be something great to be able to email to John or myself, and I can email it over to John so we can take a look at those things right away. If you don't have anything specific, we're just we're going through the ordinances and updating them as best as we can. For the business? For the Yeah, this body would worry about the business ordinances yeah, only. Yeah. Well, there, there, there are some things. Yeah, correct. Yeah, okay. if you see them, like if you have a code and a number, please send them over and say, you know, this is the code I like to look at or have reviewed or can we adjust or whatever. Um, so what are we going to name this? Code, codes review? Yeah, you could do it ordin ordinance updates or whatever. Yeah. Well, well, we're, we're, we can't do the updating. We can only do the review and the recommendation, right? Correct. Okay, yeah. so we should, we should, as a body, call this codes review. What people need in our businesses, what you're seeing out there, what people bring to us, mm -hmm. of what doesn't make sense, et cetera, right? Correct. Yep. So Park, let's just parking is one of them that <clears throat> we get a lot of questions on. Our parking ordinance is very old and outdated. And so if parking is one of them that we're already aware of, so we already know that one's on the probably the front burner because we hear from every business, every commercial business, every apartment building, we have too much parking that's needed, and we're looking for a variance. And so that's one of we know already. Um, doesn't mean that, like I said, I haven't reviewed all of the ordinances and I don't know them by the back of my hand, um, but there's probably ones in the business section that are outdated. And yeah. likely, I know we have phonographs listed as one of the ways of communication still in one of our ordinances, and, and I haven't seen a phonograph in so as, as a couple a of years. Quick conversation. Let's talk about, take a second and say, what do you normally see in your business that needs to be addressed code wise? Me specifically? Quick, quick, five, five word answer. Well, I mean, I think it's just. T oh, you're, oh, dude, you went over. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, I don't think it's going to be something you're going to be able to do today, but I think it's more or less if you do, if you can 
look through the codes if you have time to look through we the always codes. Have but that what I was going to say <coughs> is I think our goal as an ADA is to look at the ordinances and make sure that they're you know as business friendly as they can be without um, you know impacting citizens or whatever in a negative so, way so recognize those does everybody know how to get to them yeah online? Yeah. They are on the City of Dayton website. So well, I don't think it's real easy just to get to the ones that are involved in business, per se, because you get well, a they look. They are. Yep, they're all broken down. Are they? So, yeah, so there's um, two sections of the code. So to find the code, let's go to the City of Dayton website. Scroll down to the bottom, and there's a quick links, little six quick links section. It says ordinances and codes. You click on that, it goes right to our ordinances and codes. There's two sections. There's su zoning, and then there's subdivisions. Um, and so the first section is where you find business regulations. So we have specific ordinances on business regulations. If you pull down the menu of zoning, then there's business regulations section that you can look at. And then underneath subdivisions, then there's the zoning of basically, okay, if you're zoned um, GMU3, if you're zoned, and GMU3 is general mixed use 3, um, if you're zoned um, R1 or you're zoned uh, commercial C1, or, or sorry, that's, it's B1 or B2 or whatever. Those are different zoning areas, so they have different requirements on the zoning aspect. That's like setbacks and landscaping and whatever else. The business requirements one is like what you can do on your business or you may have to follow. So there's two different well, sections. <coughs> Excuse me, I was thinking of the, the one example I was just thinking of that, that just went through was the event center yep. kind of thing. Yep. And that was a good example of because I think there are a blend of ordinances that affect that potentially zoning and different things and um, yeah well the event center one is only in agricultural so it's only right. be in the A1 district so underneath the A1 district there'll be the event center ordinances listed underneath there as applicable uses that you can have so I think if there's a way to help us figure out like you know what are the things that I'm not sure if we were just looking through that if we would get into the event center one and start reviewing that is what I'm saying. Well, once we start getting our feet under us, we'll get a, we'll get a grip. I think we should add a line to this every every session uh, called code updates. And then... I don't know if we're going to have them. That's the thing. Is I'm not sure if we're going to have them every meeting. I'm going to be honest with you. They take a long time to go through. They have to have public hearings. They have to have comments. I mean, they take... They're not, they're not quick updates. Right. I need help identifying which ones which you ones? guys feel are the ones that we need to look at. Then we can identify and give those back to you and say, okay, here's ones we have to To his point, code recognition. Can I make a motion? I make a motion that members of the City of Dayton EDA have a homework assignment. And that homework assignment is to review the city ordinances that affects the businesses of the City of Dayton and come with rec recommendations to present to Zach next meeting. That's a month away. What do you guys feel about that? So we have a motion on the floor to us to go through these and see this. Do we have a second? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. All right, let's do that. Great. Yeah, and like I said, then they'll come back to you. So it's not like we're there. You guys are going to give us the homework and went back, which is basically here's the ones I want you to look at. We'll look at them, do some review of them, you know, get all the process in place. Then we can have the public hearing, set that in place, and then we can have it back to you guys for here's what we're thinking about updating it to, and you guys give us comments. Well, I don't think we can get them all done. No, it's not. It's, it's only this, a month. This, no. You give us homework assignment next month, okay? And then it's going to take us probably two okay. months to get to the next process. Our homework You're saying it's just identify the ones Correct. we want to work on. You got it. Right, right. I but don't know. I don't know changes. enough about the ordinances to give you a recommendation today. Correct. You'll reach out to the other two. I will. Yep. And make sure they are they're on page with that. Yep. yep. Are they getting emails? They should be. I haven't heard anything that they're not. So. I don't know how much time Scott wants to stick into uh, code work because he was very against it last meeting. Yeah, so we'll see where he engages. Yeah. All right, homework to do, homework for Zach. Got it. <coughs> Anything else on uh, request updates? Nothing.
Okay, moving on. Financial update. Sorry, just uh, messaging John to see if he wants to come up. If he's once he gets here. Yes, uh, EDA chaired members of the EDA. This is a little late. Apologize about that delay in the <laughs> quarterly update that was asked about at the beginning of the year for the financial update. Um, we've been a little inundated with the RFP with Levy Street, so that's been a little more preoccupied in my mind. Um, I did provide you with the revenue and expenditure report. Um, so far, we have fifty thousand dollars of property tax levy that we received, which is the first half. We received those in July. We have roughly eleven thousand dollars of other I earnings. Most of those are interest. Interest has been really good to us this year, which is good. Um, as you know, as interest rates rise, it's harder to borrow, but it's great for investing. So we have money to invest, and we've um, earned about $10,000 doing that. So our $61,000 of total revenue, and we've spent about $12,000 this year on operating supplies, professional services. Those are mostly attorney fees. Um, we also bought those EDA pots down um, in the historic village area. And then we also paid um, five thousand dollars to have that map updated from the historic village on the framework plan. So between all of those things, it's cost about twelve grand for us. Should we get these in a line ad? <coughs> you, I can provide the line items if you'd like. If you want to know more detail of those, I can most certainly provide them. I, but I think uh, Jim should have a line ad. So he's the treasurer. Sure. And we'll CC us. I'll make sure he gets an email this time <laughs> with an actual. I'd be happy with an email. <laughs> and send it to the US. Yes. Yes. I can send that to him. But yes, um, just was so you're aware of where we're at. Chime us in. Yep. Okay. Was the money we spent on the strategic planning stuff last year? No, it was this year. Oh, this year. We had that. Um, we had the open house in the end of June. So that was part of that twelve then. Correct. Yep. So it was five thousand dollars of that twelve. We've also spent about four thousand dollars on attorneys' fees doing the RFP and having the RFP process gone through and going back and forth. That was a, about Jack, four grand worth of costs. Did that. you mean the strategic plan for the EDA? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was last year. Yeah. Sorry, that was last year. The strategic plan for the EDA was last year. That was done by Ellers. Right. Okay. And so that was in last year's budget. That was the last year's line item budget. And I can provide <coughs> last year's <coughs> revenue expenditure to a publisher to do that as well for you, Jim, just so you have that. Were you having some discrepancies there, Jack? No, I was just asking. I didn't okay. see that, and I thought it was this year, so it must have been last year. So well, that's why we need a line ad stuff. That would make yeah. sense. Sure. I'll, I'll do that next time. Let's provide a light item thing. I didn't think anything of it, so I will do that next time. But you good then? Yeah. There you are. Any questions about the finances at all? Um, Can you talk a little bit about um, the money that? The I'll call it surplus money, but it, it's not really. It's just money that has been collected for the EDA. It's invested somehow. So are we talking or about the total cash balance that we have in the EDA fund? Correct. Okay. And, and I mean, I mean, my question is not so much what's the actual amount, although that'd be fine. Um, you know, what are we, what are we investing in? You know, Bitcoin or uh, you know, we what, are not in Bitcoin. <laughs> so the dollars are lumped together with the other city dollars, and they're all invested in what what we call double A plus or higher bonds, or they're in municipal securities, which are um, basically school districts, cities, counties that are bonding, and then we invest in those bonds. Um, other ones are allowed are um, taxable securities, which are ones that have come from the government, like um, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. Um, federal Home Loan Bank, um, everything's backed by the federal government. And then the last one is CDs, if we have like Discover, um, Greenwood Bank, um, I don't know, another one, I'm trying to think of another one, Chase, whatever those ones are, they're backed by the federal government up to $250,000, so we will only invest $247,000 in those ones because that means that if they go under, Hence, some of the banks that have gone under this year, if you are under $250,000, the FDIC will cover your deposit. So basically, they're extremely safe. Our, our average interest rate is roughly this year that we've been able to invest in somewhere between 4 and 5%, which has been pretty good. And now they're creeping over 5% for some of those interest rates that are longer term. The uh, total curve, which is the basically immediate to 10-year curve, they call it, it's inverted. Typically, the longer you're out, the more risk you have, so you can earn more interest, and that's they do it annually, so you have your money invested longer. Right now, it's basically about a two to three year window, and then the actual it actually goes down for the interest rates. A um, little odd when you're doing investing, but we are investing somewhere in the two to three year range, and maybe four if we can get a good interest rate, just because we get it every single year, no matter what. And depending on how the market and you feel, like I can't predict interest rates any better than anybody else can, and 
everyone says they could probably do it better than I can, which is fine. Um, but if you, I don't guess them. I just say, okay, if we can get 5% for the next five years, that's probably worth our money. And um, we've already earned 10 grand this year without even, again, those are super secure. Nothing's going to be lost. If anything happens, anything, we're always backed by those type of securities. So we only allowed four different types. That's it. We can't, we can't do Bitcoin. We can't do grandma's cookies down the road. Um, it just isn't allowed. Do we use a, a money manager for, for that kind of thing, or is that you? Nope, that's me. Um, we used to. Uh, we paid um, PMA, that was the company's name, paid them roughly $20,000 a year to manage our money. So by the time we got interest back at all, it's basically... We owed them. Law. Yeah, we owed them. Um, and when I came on board roughly a year, two and a half years ago, I said I can do that just the same. Um, they would sell and buy securities all the time and short sell them because they could make more interest and more money on that stuff. I didn't think that was probably the best option for us as a city because it ended up with lots of $15,000 and $25,000 pieces and they're really hard to combine back up to get a larger piece of actual interest. And when you invest in ten dollars to $15,000 once, all it does is makes more book work for everybody. Um, and so that's what ended up happening. And I said, I can do that the same thing without charging anybody anything. It was a charge... I, my time's my time, no matter what. And so, um, I saved twenty grand for the city, and we earn the same amount of interest or more now because we don't have to pay anybody twenty grand or more. Um, it was rough the cost <coughs> at what, that time. What's our capacity? What, what can we invest in? I mean, in total. You said uh, two hundred fifty thousand and under. <coughs> that's, so that's on a CD. If we have a CD, um, we can do two hundred fifty thousand dollars or under. But if we're in like a, a federal home loan bank um, investment, if we're in a, a bond investment, we can do whatever you want. I mean, yeah. Two and a half million dollars, whatever yeah. we have, we can invest in. Uh, there's He's no limit on those things because they're all backed by some sort of... So um, for bonding, for example, I will only invest in ones that are backed by general obligation, which means that they have to tax for them. So if they're just a straight revenue bond, so say it's for a renovation of a swimming pool, at their in a local facility in California, and that swimming pool doesn't make any money, and it's not backed by taxes. They can default on the bond, and we don't get our money back. If it's a general obligation bond, then they have to use taxes to pay for it. So they will have to property tax levy their residents in order to pay for it if the revenue doesn't make up for it. Right. So the, um, I, again, I'm doing this for many years. I know that which ones to invest in, which ones not to, and. And yes, we may not make as much interest if we don't do a revenue bond versus a general obligation revenue bond because the risk is more. However, to me, the dollars that we have are more important than the dollars we could make if the revenue's there. So, so EDA has money. Five hundred and so as we sit today, we have five hundred and seventy-two thousand dollars in the bank for the EDA. Does Maine Council invest as well? Do we do it yes. as councils? Uh, yep, I it's do all everybody's one pool, one said. pool money. And the only the two fifty is just splitting it into different accounts, so it's FDIC protected. Because any you have to, ha the FDIC is only going to protect up to two hundred fifty thousand. So whether you're in Wells Fargo or U.S. Bank or whatever, yep. Correct. if you've that's got a million you dollars, you might want to put it in four accounts so that you have. Correct. And that's for anybody. Protection. That's for you as personal as anybody right. else, <laughs> resident that's watching this afterwards. You only get two hundred fifty thousand dollars of FDIC insurance. If you have more than two hundred fifty grand in a bank, any which way, whether that's checking, savings, or the yeah. latter, you are only protected at two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So if that bank fails, you're out anything above two fifty. That's what's the clock on this? How long does it tie the money up? Uh, depending on depending on what I what I invest in. So most of them, like I said, are roughly two years, one year. All of the money that we have as a city is all pulled into one account, and then we just draw on it. So. You know, right now in the bank, you know, I think we have like three and a half million dollars or something in the bank, and that's just to fund all operations. That's EDA, city, everything related to the city operations, um, and that earns you know two percent interest right now or something at the at the bank, just sitting in the bank doing nothing. But I mean, I assume some of it's just in high interest savings accounts, sure. basically, yep. and that's where the other CDs. That's and, uh, totally liquid. So, can we set our limit as a group? Uh, I don't know if you'd want to, but yeah, you can. I'm not sure we would want to either. Again, yeah, you have five hundred seventy-two I mean, grand. What would be the purpose? Yeah. What's that? What would be the purpose of setting a limit? Uh, higher yield and return rate. A limit. Of a limit of what you're willing to invest in. Yeah. Meaning. 
So if we yeah, got 500K in there, and we, 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 we put 250 into something and keep ourselves liquid at another 250, can we capitalize on more of that interest, earn interest? Probably not. Because you can, if you lock money up and say, here's $250,000 of money, people will give you a higher interest rate than if they say, I'm going to leave it in the savings account, but I'm going to draw on it whenever I want to. People think that that's more risky, so they won't give you a high interest rate for that. So if I say, okay, I'm going to invest in this CD at $247,000, I'll give you a 5% interest for it. But if I go to the bank and say, I want to put my 250 here, but I'm going to draw on it whenever I want to because I might need, need it next week or two weeks from now, versus if I give this one for two years and say, you have the money for two years, give it back to me after two years, and we get the same money back. I mean, we give them 247, they give us 247 back, and they just pay us interest on using our money. Um, if we give it to the bank and say, okay, we're going to give you $247,000 and say, we're going to draw on it whenever we want to, they're only going to give us 2% interest because they don't know when we're going to draw on it, so they can't take that money and invest it in a house, right? Because they know that they have to get that money back at any time, so they have, they have to keep it liquid too. Yeah, there's some high interest savings type accounts that'll pay maybe four or four. And that's where we're in right now. Yeah, so we have yeah. some um, what they call they're called money market accounts, and right now we're getting four and a quarter percent, and it's essentially straight liquid cash. Yeah, and they're pretty liquid. They're hundred percent liquid. They can have the yeah. money in two days. Yeah. Uh, just trying to maximize our. I'm doing the best ask, I can. Asking questions. That's why I'm asking. Yep. Did that answer your question? Well, yeah, I just was, I wanted to, this discussion, I think this is mm -hmm. good. Um, so I'm curious, and not to get into my, my personal finances too much, but I don't I don't hold a, hold a lot of, of bonds or, or CDs directly. Mm -hmm. Mostly it's through ETFs because it makes them more liquid. So there's like money market or mutual, um, mutual funds of any kind. You can do that with, with bonds. Also, there's exchange traded funds that are, hmm. you know, that, that deal with bonds and, and municipal stuff and, well, maybe not municipal, not sure about that. Anyway, um, you know, other, other types of, in, of, uh, of bonds that are out there, higher grade investments, depending on your level of risk. But my point is that those are more liquid because you own shares of that. And so there's always this kind of this Correct. rolling trading going on and the money is more liquid because it's you own shares of that fund not the actual bond right. essentially the same thing we have as a money market account is the same thing we own a bunch of shares of one thing and then they pay us four and a half percent or something mm -hmm. um, it's still liquid cash I mean you can get it again in two days but we don't own the we don't own the bond that you're yeah. mentioning we owned a share of the bond so if we pull the money out some the money's coming from somewhere else to backfill so it's a bond care. mutual fund Correct. Yeah. So look, we are we can't as a city we can't invest in mutual funds. That's one of the things we can't invest in as a city. I don't know why. It's just not allowed by state statute. I am not sure. That's a city or an EDA? Um, both. Either one, because yeah. we're considered underneath the same umbrella of being a municipality, and so you can't invest in certain things. And mutual funds is one of them. And don't ask me why. I don't know. Do they treat ETFs any differently, or do they look at that as kind of the same thing? Probably do. I'll tell you again, some of these state statutes, just like our ordinances, are just outdated. <laughs> and uh, they don't get updated as often as they maybe they should. So they probably look at those the same way that they do mutual funds. Yeah, I just thought in terms of liquidity that mm -hmm. that might be another option. Sure. Well, I mean, the you said all the excess money or... or whatever is invested, right? Oh, and yeah, every penny of it. <clears throat> I mean, I don't know what, I'm assuming most cities have some kind of maybe small investment committee <laughs> or something that talks about like... As you get larger, you... Yeah, would, yep, that's right. what I figure. Our you portfolio know. isn't small as large enough. as, you know, a Champlin or a, a Rogers or anything. If it gets large, then you'd have like an investment committee that would right. review like what percent is invested. As soon as you get in. over roughly about $100 million, that's when you start having an investment committee. Yeah. And we do not have close to that. Yeah. Which we did. We don't. So, wrap you up, Dave. Mm -hmm. Okay, financial updates uh, is done. You have to send us those. EDI chair, before you get to the next item, would you like to meet Community Development Director John Seavault? Just to introduce himself. Come on up, John. Good morning, John. Good morning. Um, we have John Seavault here, uh, Community Development Director. He's been on for, what's the counting? 
two weeks, 16 days or something like that. Yeah. Nobody's counting or anything, but uh, he is going to be the contact that we're going to have for doing the business updates and the business code ordinance updates and stuff. Um, he's also going to be the one that's going to be handling planning commission uh, meetings and handling any community development that we have related to business involvement and going on meeting businesses and trying to get them here and so on and so forth. So happy to have John on board for sure. He's going to bring a lot of expertise and knowledge and um, do you have any questions for him this morning? No, I would just want to recognize that you were on plan for how many years? Five or six. Five or six. Yeah. And, and there was a lot of work to get done then. Yeah, yeah. Well, welcome aboard. Yeah, well, thank you, Tim. <laughs> Anybody so else? You've been here for three weeks now, John. Can yes. We, can we get a list of your D accomplishments? Uh, <laughs> yep, yeah, it's day 16, so every, every, uh, every day is a new accomplishment. So. He showed up. <laughs> yeah. Let's start there. So I just want to mention the role is really kind of to facilitate business development, more or less, or community development? In total, yep. In total community development. So that's both residential and business. So John's idea is to get the best bang for a buck in every aspect we're looking at. Try to get his best. So he's our he's our boots on the ground. He's our boots on the ground. He's he reports and says, "Yep, this is what we need for the businesses," and then he lets me know, and then we talk about it and go from there. So, okay. so you he you should be integral in, in this kind of. If we're going to review these ordinances to from a business friendly kind of or. Yep. As so it, it, as it's all you know. There's you, you all have different pers you know, very different perspectives, and yeah. so you know. I guess I would look at it kind of in two camps. Is um, if you think of uh, what parts of the code are inter might interfere with businesses, it's all of it. At the yeah. same time, it also protects businesses. So somewhere right. there's a, a fine line between what's best for data. What's the balance, right? Okay. No, that's great. John's going to be an integral part of moving this community forward and having him on board. I would imagine. Um, we previously had one a community development director, but they were paired with the city administrator position. And that, you know, obviously it's hard to have boots on the ground and be in the office and handling high level things too. And it's t it's just a tough role. So we're happy to have John and have those um, separations. It's time we had one. Huh? Yep. It's time we had one. Yep. And as a business group, we all have those things. Yep. We, need them, we need them addressed. And so not send it to you, send it to him, he'll send it to you? Correct. You got it. <laughs> or all, you send it to me, I'll send it to him. Yeah. Sure, we'll as long as it gets out there, right? Correct. Yeah. Well, I don't know if we're an open meeting violation if we say everybody sends something to him because he's not admin, right? Oh, yeah. Or he because him. Oh, he's mm -hmm. staff. Just, you're just like me. Oh. Yep. You can send it all you want to John. He's good to go. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, what, what welcome, do we welcome aboard. Thank yeah, you. Welcome. Yeah, welcome. Do we need to do anything nope. in the meantime? Don't think so. Thank you. No, make a yeah, list. Make a list. Maybe an open invitation to our meetings any time. Correct. Yeah, so John will be at the meetings, like I said, and I'm not sure what that transition will be. If it will be me and John at most of the meetings, it will just stay with me, which is fine too, or if it will just be John here at the meetings of the EDA in the morning. We'll work through that and kind of discuss again. I don't want to um, – John's already drinking out of a garden hose, trying to get everything down and then oh, okay. pass. Uh, so, in fact, he may take your role yeah. as running the meetings. Correct. yeah. Maybe. Maybe. We'll yeah, see. okay. We'll see what the yeah. future brings and whatever comes from it. Super. Thank you. Thanks, John. So I put number six on the agenda today to have a discussion. I, I don't want to speak for the group, but I do want the group to speak for itself. <coughs> and I just want a quick response from everybody here individually. That's and then you know maybe we could email the guys who aren't here. And I want to be able to make sure that if we dig into the succession of Hennepin County to eliminate us from it, that we should look into that. And I wanted all your guys' opinion on that in I, session. I do want to make one comment. So I did reach out that uh, the city attorney reviewed the EDA back in and said, I see you have a discussion that um, just want to make sure that you're aware. So make sure when we're talking about it, we're framing it as a detachment or a change of boundaries from the county um, because succession is not physically like a legal process <laughs> you can't secede from anything you can detach and you can change the boundaries but you can't officially secede so i did not know that when i said the uh pack it up but just want to let you know detachment and boundary adjustments are the legal processes for what are being requested and when you detach you have to reattach to another you got it county or if we have 400 square miles we can attach our own 
We do not have 400 square miles. What do we do with other cities? It, we would not with, if you're thinking about Champlain, there's not enough there. No, no. <laughs> so, you don't need more than that. I'll start here. Or what are we, 23 years? We 20? are 25 square miles. 25 square miles. 25 square miles. So We're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> right? We, we just are one find 15 more. 16, 16 more cities. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you would like to explore that, you give us your input. Yeah, well, I, I think I've expressed my opinion on this before. I think that it's it's worth exploring. I know that our legal staff are looking into the the nuts and bolts of what what that would look like for us, and and I'm I'm real anxious to hear what the process looks like and see what kind of mountain we're trying to climb. But I think it's worth exploring. Yes. So okay, Jim. I guess I would I would be in the exact same camp. Okay. You know, I, I need to know more before I oh, sure, sure. jump head first. Um, I don't want to spend a bunch of money on something that Scootal? we have no chance of <laughs> being successful at. Um, but if there's a chance, then, then maybe there is some benefit. At but least explore it. Yeah. Okay. Done? Yep. Talk to me, Jack. Yeah, I'd be similar. I, I would support uh, investigating it, but I think we need to understand the pros and cons and likelihood of success. <coughs> Good. Talk to Jack on that as well. Have you guys ever looked at the pros and cons? As no, we're, we're, right now we're just talking about the idea of doing so. Okay. Yeah. I'll be for it. like to explore do we need a motion on this, or what do we not need here? Um, you could make a motion if you want to as a recommendation to the council. Obviously, the, you know, the EDA doesn't have an official part of any of it. Right. Yeah. It's just more of a recommendation body to say, okay, would you like to move forward with it? Again, that's what this body is designed for, is for recommendations. So that would be what I would recommend then if you're going to do a motion in a second to move forward. Um, I also would want to provide more information that there was provided a memo, if you look at the City of Champlain's website, uh, for the August 20... Repeat the date. The August 20 what? 20, 25th meeting. That's the Friday. I think it was the Monday, wasn't it? 28th. I think it was the August 28th meeting of um, the work session that was requested by the City of Champlain. There was a memo provided by their city attorney, and it is exactly what our city attorney would provide in the same way. Although Champlain's attorney is not giving us legal advice, she did review that memo, our city attorney, and said that that's exactly what she would recommend. So if you want to read exactly what the process is and how it will work, um, that came from Barnaguzi and Stefan, um, which is the city of Champlain's city attorney, and that is exactly the same process. So if you ever want to go back and look at it, you can go to the website of the city of Champlain, find the August 28th uh, work session meeting, and I will do my best to send it out to you so you have that information, um, just because it's easier for me just to send it out because I know where it's at, because um, I sent it to the city attorney, our city attorney as well. Okay. That'd be great. But it already is laid out there in black and white, <coughs> an official memo from their city attorney of how the process goes. It is not an easy process, and it is not um, most of the time successful. I will say that they, um, over the term, I think there was one city who tried to do this many, many years ago from what our city attorney had mentioned, and they failed um, miserably. And I mean that by per percentage vote because it's about a vote of the whole county. So that's one of the last one sections is the vote of the whole county, and they failed um, miserably. So. Is that a popular vote? Yep, county vote. Yep. Okay, so, so it's like a referendum for the, in the county. Yep. <laughs> mm, correct. Interesting. So just want to let you know. It is not an easy battle, and it was attempted once by another city. I don't remember the city's name, otherwise I'll tell you because I yeah, don't remember. Was it Pine, the county or Pine City? Mm, might have. It might have been. I don't. I honestly don't remember. I know that she mentioned it during my conversation. But, <laughs> but if it had, this happened years ago, this ain't in today's world. It is not in today's world. No, so today's is. world is kind of skewed, and there's a lot of cities yeah, that are not happy with this. Many years ago. Okay, so fail miserably and failed is still failed. Correct. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter if you missed it by a percentage. Or 50 percent, um, you're, you're fast. the fastest loser. Got it. Correct. So we're, we're going to look for a motion on this here that we're going to recommend this to council. Yep. Can we get one? Do we need to state the motion? Yes. I guess the motion would be to recommend that council take a look at departing. 
detaching. Detaching from Hennepin County. Yes. So that would be the motion? Yep. Then there's a second. No second. So I made the motion. You made a motion. Okay. So we have one. Juan, is that you? Yep, one we'll second. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Semantics. That will be provided to the council. If I can get it turned around, I should be able to on the next council meeting. Just so you know. Well, there's really not an action here. There's just a. Correct. Yep. That's what I mean. So I will provide the just recommendation, recommendation. <laughs> to the council on the next council. Up to, or not the council meeting. Juan, yeah. do you have something? No. Oh, no. Okay, let's move this to seven. Zach? Staff updates. Um, industrial commercial ones, we have received two applications. We have received them very preliminarily. We haven't technically accepted them yet. So I know that John was working through those two. We received two of them. They are both uh, in and near the West French Lake Road area, down by Graco, down by Capital Partners, CRG, the big giant million square foot building. The Cube is what it's called. Um, it has two buildings. One is uh, J and A Glass and Mirror, so they are a manufacturing company, and the other one is QT Commercial, which is Quality Trusted Commercial, and they are a, um, I think they're roofing. Roofing, okay. yeah. So they are a roofing company, um, and so they'll have outdoor storage and stuff there. So that isn't J and A Glass and Rogers for now. Maybe I don't know where they're from, but they're they are looking to build a new building. They're not moving. It's a Second I don't, location? I don't know if it's second location, or they're making. Oh, okay. They're looking to build a brand new building in um, on West French Lake Road. Uh, so, okay. like I said, just south of Graco and the Capital Partners building um, on the portion of roadway that we redid um, just this past year. So, that is the new ones we've received. Again, we have not accepted those applications yet that I'm aware of. Yeah. Well, we have accepted them. Okay, so then they're on the timeline. Those will be presented at the next EDA meeting. She'll have time to comment those, and then we'll provide those comments to Council. I believe they'll go to the October Planning Commission meeting, correct? Okay, so they'll go to the October Planning Commission, they'll go to the October EDA meeting, so you have the ability to comment on those, and then they'll go to the council meeting at the end of October for council approval. Um, and then, I don't know if we have any other industrial commercial yep. applications. Well, not applications, but we did have the sale of the uh, trailer park. Oh, yes, yep, the trailer park did sell. That was on August, oh boy. Testament knowledge here. August, and I think it was the 31st. August 31st is when the um, trailer court or um, Dayton Trailer Park. Um, is that the only one we have? It's the one we have, yep. Mobile okay. Home Park. That is the one that it did sell, and I don't know who the new buyer is. I haven't heard anything. Come out of Georgia. So. How, how much that, did that sell for? 27 million. Oh, seriously? I didn't even know that information, so you know more at, I do. at 27 million, I can't believe rent is that good. So I would assume that they're going to be doing something with it. Um, they do own more land. There is more land available for that, um, and I'm assuming they bought the whole portion of the parcel. So that is all private land owned in there, um, and then they have another portion to the east of them that is technically wooded right now that is not utilized. So mm -hmm. I'm assuming they could expand the mobile home park to make it larger if they'd like to. I'm not sure what they'll do with that piece of property, to be honest, I'm unsure. They've owned it for many, many years, and there was discussions, I want to say two years ago, of right. expanding it, making a new one, or whatever they want to call it, and that never came to fruition. So. Unsure, but um, that, again, that's not on an application side, so I wouldn't know that. So. Yeah. Sales are unfortunately not in my repertoire. Ka kind of big news in our city. Uh, sure. Well, it's pretty huge news, especially for the business community. 27 million for that? Good for them. I don't have any other industrial commercial applications. I know we have had some preliminary conversations with another parcel um, near just on the opposite side of Dayton Parkway that'll be open. So Dayton Parkway is expected to be expected to be open October 15th. That is the anticipated end or anticipated completion date of Dayton Parkway between 117th Avenue and County Road 81. So that's been worked on for I know last year and a half or so with the CRG, the Cubes building, the million square foot building. And so that portion of prop, the portion of roadway will be completed so you'll be able to access between those two. Um, just on the so other side of the parkway from the Cubes building, there is um, an EAW, which is called an Environmental Awareness Worksheet, that is being done on that property because it is looking to be developed. 
and so they have to do an environmental impact basically before they can submit an application. So they are moving forward with that process. It's still going to, I don't know when that's going to actually come forward as an application, but they are looking to develop a portion of that property, luckily the south half so of that property now. The Dayton Parkway, once that's open, that portion's open, basically that's going to give you access from 81 up to where FedEx is at? Or um, that? Yes, so you'll be able to access it. It'll go to 117th Avenue or West French Lake Road, whatever one you want to call it. Again, I don't know where the um, cutoff is of where yeah. it switches. I'm unsure because the curve. That same road is called Rogers Boulevard and Rogers, then West French Lake Road along West French Lake, <laughs> along French Lake, and then on the bottom of French Lake, it's called 117th Avenue. So that same roadway has three different names. It makes it difficult to. That's why I was asking for the clarification. But yes, because so you would be able to go across 81 North and 81, past the businesses on 113th Avenue, um, which are um, like fenced or mowing and, and I don't know, but um, Quiche Oil. Minnesota towing, some of the ones that are down there uh, to the right, and then if the Q's building will be on your left hand side, you'll be able to go to the north and, and into a T. That'll be 117th Avenue at that point. You could take a left then and then go towards Rogers, and it would end up by the FedEx building or Graco or whatever you want to call right. it. Okay. Right. So that's the only, I mean, through access really that's happening with that opening. Correct, yep. yep. The Residential, yeah. I'm sorry. We had um, approved repaving another section of 117th. That will be done before October 15th as okay, well. Okay, that's, that's part of this? Correct, yep, that's part of this as well. So the portion that is unimproved at the moment, uh, we redid West Webster Road from the parkway, would be west towards Graco, and then Graco was finishing it up on their plat boundary. Um, there is a portion of 117th that's already been completed and updated uh, as part of the Braeburn Trails development, which would have been from Fernbrook all the way west to just short of East French Lake Road. So there's roughly a, just short of a half mile piece of pavement that has not been approved at all and is in very, very poor shape. Um, we, uh, the council approved that at the la, la, two council meetings ago to improve that portion of the road. So that will be reclaimed and repaved at the same time so that is one continuous piece of pavement that'll be redone through 117th improvement all the way through the West French Lake Road. Um, currently, West French Lake Road is only base co course, so it's uh, only has the first layer of pavement, and then so then we'll redo all of it at the same time, so that you have one continuous piece of pavement and no breaks in the pavement. That'll be open before October fifteenth, which is why we used October fifteenth for the parkway. So we have those both done at the same exact time, so that they're not one's not open and then close it and then open it again, so you can't access. Hmm. It won't take long. That one will be reclaimed and repaved. So again, essentially just. Right at the right of pavement, pack it down into the base course, into the pavement, repave it, call it a day. We're not hauling any material off or, you know, we're just reusing everything that's they on use site. the millings? Yep, use the millings, pack it back down in there as hard as you can so it kind of improves the base as much as possible and then repave over it. So at the last, it'll be a crossing our fingers, it's over a 10 year fix, but that is the hope. Okay. Presidential? Kurt? We have nothing new in the residential applications. Um, we have a couple of concept plans that will come back to you guys once they're actually officially um, sent in for a preliminary plat. We have two concept plans at Council right now. Um, one apartment building that you guys are already aware of, which is the Enclave one at Territorial and 81. That has been talked about and discussed for the last six months, and we finally got a concept plan from them last month. <coughs> that will go to council the first meeting in October so that will be at the council and then we'll see preliminary plat once a preliminary plat comes in then, then you'll see it at EDA just so you have an idea of what's going on the other one that we have that's moving faster is the Dayton Parkway neighborhood is on the other side of 94 uh, in the small triangle that we uh, maintain between Corcoran and Rogers and Maple Grove and us what I call Four Corners um, along the Dayton Parkway. So that is on the what they call the Roberg parcel. It's uh, basically the part that fronts 94. That has a billboard on it. If you drive 94 right now and if you get on to 94 heading east, you would see the billboard on the right hand side past a grove of trees and then it's an open field. That portion is looking to be a parkway neighborhood which is in a, um, a mix of both townhomes. I think it's like a quadplex type look. Twin homes, something like that. And then apartment buildings. So it'll be a mix of both. 
it'll kind of be its own neighborhood because it's again kind of isolated so um, it'll be uh, fully involved it'll be a clubhouse open field area um, bike trails so on and so forth so that development is coming through we do not have a preliminary plan yet that's why it hasn't come to EDA because there hasn't been official motion on it there's just been concept plan and concept plan is basically just unofficial comments you know comments from council and that's it that's the property with a fair amount of wetland and correct. then <coughs> the only access is from Dayton Parkway right yeah. up toward 94 update on the big triangle for department number three for the fire department has there any movement been there there Where has been no movement on that parcel. Have the have council made a decision what they want to do with that or if no. they, who they want to handle it or how we're nope. going to negotiate it or? Nope. Nope. And, and no. Um, I, the <coughs> I know we had a chat with us at staff level and I believe it's either going to this coming council meeting or the following council meeting in October for a discussion from the council of what they'd like to do with it. They have information. I don't know what to do with it any more than the council does and so we just need to make a decision on we feel is the best option for that piece of property and what the parcel we're talking about is the tax forfeiture parcel that's on Dayton Parkway just south of 81 on the west side of the road opposite of Semstone and opposite of um, RDO RDO yes right. across from now, the, the comfort areas. matters and correct yep straight across the road from comfort matters if, if we can't negotiate this to a reasonable price to purchase then it would be my personal feeling that we accept it and, and we only have about seven things or 11 things we can turn it into. Uh, we have seven available items that we can utilize it as a municipal property. Currently it is not a municipal property. It's considered a Hennepin County tax forfeiture. We technically have it considered a parking lot, yeah. park and ride parking lot. That's what we have it reserved for. We can change uses whenever we'd like and become as if we utilize it on an annual basis, uh, for a, let's say, a, a building of the nature that you're referencing. We can utilize it and take it at zero dollars and it would then just come to the city as property. And then it would be put in the city of Dayton's name. Um, but then again, if we want to do anything other than use it for municipal purposes, uh, whether it's park and ride, park land, um, transportation, municipal facilities or whatever, there's like seven different things we can use it for, that's free. If it's not any one of those seven and we want to do something else with it, let's put it back in the tax roll give it to a commercial business, whatever we want to do with it as a city, we have to essentially, oh, what do you call it, it's not recapture, it's reconvey. We have to reconvey the property, yep. reconveyance from the county, and then have to pay a purchase price for that. I, I heard whisperings that the fire department would want to put a uh, training facility on that. That is correct. Okay. Well, if we're, if we're paying full number, I would rather see the fire department get it. Sure. Okay. Sounds great. Um, were you done with that? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I'm good. Yep. I don't have anything else that you guys have any other questions yep, yep, for. I got it. Anything that you guys are seeing other than that, I'm open. 7C, which I want to add real quick, is the QCTV. I reached out to them a while back. Now, we have no video control outside of this area in this, in this city. I says, how do we become a QCTV member? So it's QCTV and D and whatever else it is. They said to reach out to admin. And I says, well, I'm kind of reaching out to you now. How do we become this? So I think we should explore uh, parade coverages, uh, city events, all the stuff that Champlin and Dayton or Anoka get as a QCTV member. How do we explore that? Because other than me, I can't say, turn this on. They were, they were willing to listen to us, and they were more than willing to put us on their header title. I'm trying to think of how we would do that. Probably a council action, maybe a recommendation uh, from trying to figure out how you go from this EDA board to the council with that kind of action, because um, it's going to take council action to get it initiated with the contract. You know, we can't just say admin, as in myself, can't just go, "Yep, yeah, we're going to be part of this thing," and now we're doing it. Because can we um, direct you as that to, to look into? You could recommend it again. I could bring it to council. That okay. would be the path that I would utilize, just because we want to make sure that the council is aware of the fact that we're looking at getting into this. If I look into it, which is fine to do, I'd rather just, again, have the idea that the council wants it versus me spending time and going, okay, we're going to do this thing, and then the council says no. Well, so. the last, you, you weren't there at the parade this weekend, right? I was not. Okay. So if you've seen all the people there at this parade and, and the zero coverage we had, that, that's, that's just ludicrous. We should be covered. We should have these events televised. We should be part of this deal. Why wouldn't we? That's part of the community in involvement. 
So I reached out to him way before this and says, how do we do this? But we still have nothing there. And I'm so that's, we're going to have to make sure we're looking at it from perspective of that's not a city sponsored event. Or it's say that is not a city run event. On Saturday, the event for Heritage Day is run by the Dayton Community Foundation. That is not run by the city of Dayton. Okay. So we have to make sure that if we're looking to do QCTV and not saying that's wrong, we have then have to allow them to do all and I'm gonna use the nonprofit organizations to say all the nonprofits would be able to utilize QCTV on behalf of the city. Um, the city's gonna sign the contract that says we want to be part of it, which means we have to pay a membership fee and so on and so forth, but then we would then allow nonprofits, and then we have to figure out, the city has to figure out what they're going to allow and not allow for being able to utilize QCTV. Just because, and I use the Saturday event as an example because everyone thinks it's run by the city, but it is not. It is run by the Dayton Community Foundation and I believe the Dayton Lions. We help, and um, the city's more than willing to help and be gracious with trucks and sure. um, people and time and whatever else, and, and we are always supportive of those things, but. We do not run that event. So Friday night's event, yes. Saturday, no. Correct. Friday oh. night's event is run by the city. Saturday's event is run by the Dayton Community Foundation. And so... Oh, Dayton Lions. Not saying that it's any which way, but it's just want to make sure that we're aware of... Okay. When we say we want to have the coverage at the parade, it's then that's a non-profit event, not a city event. Sounds like work that into our contract. Um, or something, or yeah, allow... Or Friday nights was a great event, too. We had great fireworks, we had a good turnout. Yep. It was just a great show all the way around. Okay. Which leads me into my segue to, say, recognitions. Recognitions of Zach putting this on and making stuff happen. I want you to know that this chair, and hopefully this body, agrees that you did a great job. Thank you. And we also reach out to um, Dennis and Lisa, who actually did the Saturday's event, which was a huge thing big parade, big stuff, and we want to make sure that we completely recognize that. So there's my accolades for the day. Uh, to look back CTV update on big part three. Looking for an adjournment. Motion. If we're all done. Well, one thing I was going to, I wanted to just bring up be the consent agenda. We added that last time. Yes. Should <coughs> when or how should we have open forum? on this particular is it is it standing or is it something that we have to put like a standing agenda item and then Correct. decide <laughs> or do we just put it on each whatever meetings we want to I'm just kind of curious because we've had a few more people coming to speak I mean it's not very often but I'm just trying to address that issue what should we do we, do we have an issue well the issue is when People know that you have open forums so they can talk about something if we're gonna I think that's the only issue. So not, do we not just agenda items. Yep. do we just put it on an agenda from the previous meeting because we know something's coming up, or do we have a standing open forum and you know, ninety percent of the time nobody shows up and no one's here, so we just go on, you know. That's I mean I don't know what that's what the city council does, right? Yep. Yes. Yeah, and I think the other I, don't, I guess I don't know about planning, but I know Parks for sure has got that as a standing agenda item. We could most certainly add it. We just, again, we no, haven't I'm just added asking added. the group. I mean, it seems like we probably need to have an approach of how we want to deal with open form. Either just add it when we need it or have it as a standing item and just blow through it because 99% of the time no one's here anyway. Yeah, but that 1% of the time all we do is get threatened and sued. So well, how do you <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they can come up, whoever comes up and makes their three-minute statement, and that's it. Which is that 1% of the time is usually we're going to sue. Well, I well, mean, I think we should do it as needed. I, how do you predict that? All right. All right. I mean, my feeling is, uh, I'll just say, I think people have the right to, to talk to us, and, and even if we don't agree with them, and, and I would say... Oftentimes that's going to be the case when they make the time to come and talk to us. They're, it's because they're unhappy about something. Um, and I think that's part of the process. We get very little community involvement even with the council in terms of people that are willing to take their time and come up and speak to us live. So for me, even if it's not, you know, even if we don't agree with it, we're not going to act on it anyway. I think that people ought to have that opportunity to come and say that these... And you know, you got three minutes, and, and that's 
your job as chair is to manage that part. That we want as a group? I would agree with Dave, I think. Is that a yes? Uh, yes, I would agree with Dave, I said. Is that what you guys agree to? Yeah, I would I would agree with that. So, so then we're going to need a motion. We need a motion and a second to add it to the next future agenda items. And we haven't had it before, and it's not, I'm just trying to make sure everyone's on the same page when we have those type of changes to the agenda items. And so, need a motion and a second if you want to add those. That was a chance idea. Oh. I'll make a motion to add open form to our agenda as a standing item. Second? Second. All opposed? Or all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. You, did you vote yes? Did I vote yes? Did you, did you vote yay or nay? I voted yay. <laughs> okay, sounds good. <laughs> 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 he abstains. He <laughs> abstains. Okay, um, who's, who's out? Motion to adjourn out. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. In favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen.